phase dynamics. <coughs> so in, if you go by syllabus, uh, syllabus is not uh, that lengthy. So first we need to go through basics, gravitational field, Kepler's law, then mechanics of orbital trajectory, and then orbits. So majority of the questions comes from uh, different orbits, okay? This is very important topic. And some questions are there from mechanics of orbital trajectory, some from Kepler's law. So this is about syllabus. Now references, if you go, uh, you can refer introduction to flight by Anderson. There is one chapter eight. Any of you know? I think chapter eight. And then in NPTEL, this is space technology module 16. That's enough for get syllabus. No book is required. Okay. You can solve 99% of the question with the help of uh, these two references from space dynamics. Now, if you take the wettes in gate exam, usually it is asked like two marks or marks. Like one question is there from space dynamics. In one paper, there are three, four questions and they were for six marks, okay? In the recent uh, 2020 or 2019 paper, it was for six marks. And in some paper, you will not find any question from space dynamics, like maybe zero marks. Okay, but usually it is that two to four marks or uh, usually two to four marks max. So this is about wet is part. Now syllabus is not lengthy. Um, earlier days uh, there were uh, additional syllabus was like orbit transfer. Now orbit transfer they have removed uh, from gate syllabus. Okay, so only till orbits we need to learn. Okay. So let's start with uh, simple basics of our journey. So we need to know these constants, which are you know uh, used frequently in space dynamics. So universal uh, gravitational constant G is what 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square mu. So mu is multiplication of G and mass of Earth. And this multiplication value is how much? 3.98 into 10 to the power 14 meter cube per second square. The radius of Earth, which we are going to use frequently, 6371 kilometer, and approximately sometime people use 6400 kilometer also. But your answer will vary based on what value we use. Gravitational acceleration, it is 9.81, all of us know. And mass of Earth, it is how much? 5.98 into 10 to the power. 24 kg. So with these gravitational constants and other thing, uh, we start with gravitational field. So the first thing which we need to know, Newton's law of gravitation. So all of us knows the attraction force between two particle, F1 to 2, is given by what? G, uh, G M1, M2 upon R square, right? So the M1 and M2 are the mass of those particles and the R is the distance between those two particles. So this is the gravitational force of attraction. Now guys, <clears throat> we know in general in between any two particle, this force is negligible. Why? Why this force is negligible between any two particles? Why it is negligible? Anyone? No. Radius is less no? between two particles. Distance is not more. It is negligible because G value is very small. It is in 10 to the power minus how much? 11, right? So that's why this force of attraction between any two particles, okay, if there are two human standing side by side, there is a force of attraction, okay, but it is negligible because the G value is very small. How much is the G value? It is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11, okay? 
but when you compare yourself and earth what is the difference why there is a force of gravitation which is everyone feel right why any reason any can can tell me <clears throat> yes mass of earth is the reason so mass of earth is very high right so that's why this force between earth and a person is feelable right it's not negligible so mass of earth is quite high it is 10 to the power 24 though the distance is also more but this part the mass of earth will uh, <coughs> will uh, you know compensate with g and uh, radius okay so this is force of so we know the the force between two masses or any particle is proportional to product of mass and inversely proportional to radius square so it is f equal to g m1 m2 by r square and g is universal gravitational constant so we all know this now due to this gravitational field okay there is gravitational potential energy which we are going to use all the time in uh, this uh, space dynamics okay because any particle or any object which is a, in some orbit it will have two kind of energy one will be potential energy gravitational potential energy and second will be kinetic energy so what is the gravitational potential energy it is always zero at infinity and it will be neg negative why it is negative can anyone tell at some finite distance why gravitational potential energy is negative anyone why because this gravitational potential field is conservative field okay and the force produced due to that uh, conservative field is always you know attractive force so your your potential energy is negative okay due to conservative field and or you can say under force of attraction the um potential energy stored is what negative so it is zero at infinity and if you comes towards earth center it will be negative okay why negative because to separate this particle you need to apply uh, you know energy or you need to give energy so we can separate particles okay now if you move particles from one place to another place under gravitational force then that will be what change in potential energy and we can find with this formula which is again you guys have learnt in your uh what we called in uh, this 11th physics now gravitational potential is nothing but <coughs> gravitational potential energy per unit mass is known as gravitational potential and this is nothing but uh, yes now the next is what gravitational potential field so gravitational force per unit mass or intensity of gravitational force is what gravitational potential energy and this is nothing but acceleration due to gravity so the intensity of gravitational force per unit mass at earth surface is known as gravitational acceleration okay gravitational acceleration so e equal to what f vector by m and we know f vector by m is what g capital m by r square and we know it is nothing but g okay at at earth surface g not is what capital gm by r square okay now the next thing how the variation of gravitation uh, gravitational acceleration okay above earth surface below earth surface 
so above earth surface if you go this g g not will not be g not so g value will change so how the change will happen so the above earth surface at any altitude g is nothing but g not into 1 minus 2h by r you guys can see with this first what will be the force of gravitation and then we know what is the gravitational potential field which is g and uh, then you simplify you will get you will find at any altitude above earth surface g is g not into 1 minus 2h r but if you go below earth surface this is not same it will be g equal to g not 1 minus h by r how i found this again again below we know what is this gravitational potential force below earth surface and from here if you find it is coming as how much g not into 1 minus h by r okay so now again your gravity will change differ if you move from like uh, uh, this is pole and this is what equator so if you move from equator to pole your g value will be different how it will be given by your g at any radius it is what g minus omega square r sin theta what is the omega omega is angular momentum of uh, uh, this angular velocity of the earth okay angular velocity of the earth so you can say at any um uh, position at any position which is theta from vertical what is g value the g value will be g minus omega square r sin theta r is not radius okay how we find this formula it is based on position from pole at any position from pole at theta angle okay so what is the g value it is g minus omega square r sin theta where it is maximum if theta equal to 0 g dash will be equal to g and when theta equal to 90 degree at equator your g dash will be g minus omega square r so it's a minimum okay so at pole your uh, gravitational acceleration is maximum and at equator it is minimum or you can say force of gravity at pole it will be highest and minimum at equator okay now comes to space dynamics and uh, from these kepler's law there are questions in gate exam okay there are two three questions from kepler's law so what is the kepler's first law so first law says a satellite or object describes an elliptical path around center of the attraction okay center of attraction so you can see this is mass okay earth and m is the mass of the earth now this particle is moving okay this object so what it, uh, kepler says kepler says it will always follow elliptical path okay it always follow elliptical path okay about the center of attraction about center of attraction that's it but it's not necessary we have elliptical path we can have other path also we can have a circular path we can have a parabolic path we can have a elliptical path we can have a hyperbolic path it all depends on it all depends on the velocity at particular radius okay what is the second law which is again very important uh, for elliptical orbit specifically uh, see what it says suppose at some um, at some time t it is at this position after some time it moves to new position okay so it is t1 and t2 so this t1 is, uh, and t2 so what it mean there is delta t which is what 
T2 minus T1. So this area covered will be same if you take the same interval, like from here, again, delta D. So what it means, dA by dt, the rate of change of area with respect to time is constant, okay, by object. So how it can be proved? We can prove also, but before that, is it clear, guys? So what happened? If your radius is more, your particle will be move, moving slowly. When radius is less, this particle will moving faster. But the area, this area and this area will be same if this delta T and uh, this delta T, it is same. Now, how it can be proved? So for that, we consider this is small section of that elliptical path, and you can see the area covered uh, for a, a small change in d theta is what? This area. So this is d theta, this is dh. So what is the area covered? dA is 1 by 2. It can be a triangle. Consider d theta into dh. Now we know what is the dh or you can, uh, this small dh is nothing but r into d theta. Now we can substitute here. So it will become one by two r square d theta, it is dA. Now guys, further, we already know, if you divide it dA by dt, one by two r square and d theta by dt is nothing but your angular velocity. And r square omega, or r square theta dot is known as what? Angular momentum per unit mass, and it always remain constant under conservative forces. So angular momentum remains constant under conservative force, and this we are going to see also when we derive um, equation of orbit, okay, or orbit trajectory equation. So guys, dA by dt is what here? 1 by 2 and r square omega or 1 by 2 r square theta dot. And we know r square theta dot is nothing but angular momentum per unit mass and it remains constant under conservative forces. So your dA by dt is constant. Okay, so this is a gate question. Now the third law. From third law also, there are gate question. What third law says? The square of the time period is proportional to cube of semi major axis. So for any ellipse, we know what is the semi major axis? See, this is 2A. So this is the total major axis and this is 2B. Okay. So semi major axis is what? A. So this time period in this elliptical orbit is like t square is proportional to a cube. Okay, and from here also there is a gate question. Okay, so these are the Kepler's law. Now the next important part is what mechanics of orbital trajectory. So in this, the derivation part is fine. But the important part is what the final equation. So what is the final equation? I will tell you how this derivation also works out. Um, what is the final equation for orbital trajectory? See, this is governing differential equation. And for this, the solution is given by this equation. So at any radius, the trajectory of that particle or object under Gravity is given by what? H square by mu upon 1 plus E cos theta minus C. Or this H square by mu, sometimes people write as P. So it is 1 plus E cos of theta minus C. And C will be 0 also based on the initial condition. So the final R is what? P upon 1 plus E cos theta. So this is what the formula and from here also gate question is there. Now how this formula is arrived that I will explain you guys. So 
most of you will be knowing lagrange equation of motion how many of you are aware this is also used in vibration i don't use but many author use lagrange equation anyone have used solving vibration problems lagrange equation of motion like we are using potential energy kinetic energy and using the lagrange equation method anyone of you have used in vibration mechanical vibration yeah yeah here our sir yes satish you are saying something no no lagrange we used in vibration you are not audible satish to me no lagrange yes, function we use sir in vibration you are saying Hello. Uh, where I went actually? Hello. Yeah, yeah. Just a moment. It's okay, um, sir. You proceed, sir. It's okay, sir. I I need to join it. Just a moment, uh, Shatish. Yeah. Yes, Shatish. No, no. This uh, Lagrange we used in vibration. I said, sir. Yeah, I am aware. I told. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. hello yes so in mechanical vibration actually people use this okay so same thing we use uh, this to derive am i audible right yeah yeah okay so what lagrange equation says your kinetic energy is function of your coordinates right so your coordinates like you have x y z coordinates so here it are represented like q1 q2 and q3 so these are the coordinates and you can have a velocities like velocity we can represent like in x direction x dot y dot z dot so same way it is like q1 dot q2 dot and q3 dot so like that so t is kinetic energy it is represented and phi is potential energy so potential energy we know always function of coordinates and your kinetic energy will be function of we know mostly it is function of velocities now there is lagrange function which is nothing but beta and it is what the difference of kinetic energy minus potential energy t minus phi but ultimately we know always phi is what negative right in case of conservative field now guys as for the lagrange equation in one particular coordinate suppose i want my equation in q1 coordinate so what is my lagrange equation it is d by dt do beta by do q1 dot minus do beta by do q1 is equal to zero okay so this is what your equation in q1 direction now same way i can have equation in q2 which is what d by dt do beta by do q2 dot minus do beta by do q2 is equal to zero so like that i can have lagrange equation in each coordinate direction now we will be using this lagrange equation for orbit orbit equation now to start orbit equation what we consider we consider a particle of mass m is at some radius r and it is making theta from local horizon so local horizon usually we consider equator right so the any angle made from equator is what theta uh, okay and it is at some radius r 
so at this position if it is moving with some velocity v okay this velocity this velocity will have a two component one is a radial component and one is tangential component okay now guys this radial components is what r dot and tangential component is r theta dot why because here we are considering r comma theta coordinate system okay you know polar coordinate system guys how many of you are aware about polar coordinates in fact in aerodynamics also we use somewhere right this r and theta so polar coordinate so we are using polar coordinates so r and theta so velocity is given by r dot and uh, the uh, radial and tangential velocity now kinetic energy of this uh, particle will be what 1 by 2 m v square and v square we already know it is what it is r dot square plus r theta dot whole square so from here we can find what is this kinetic energy of the particle now once you know kinetic energy we know what is the potential energy v phi so phi will know for this it is minus g capital m small m by r so you guys can see this is what potential energy now we find beta beta is what lagrange function so we find beta t minus phi and you can see this now this is beta so we can now find write first in which coordinate theta coordinate what is your lagrange equation so this is what lagrange equation now in this there are two term this is first term this is second term so we find individually what is my first term so when you find first term first what you have to find do beta by do theta dot so do beta by do theta dot from here if you see the first term will become zero second term will be 2 r square theta dot 2 2 will get cancel so it will be r square theta dot and third term is zero now guys uh, r square theta the dot okay mm -hmm. okay yes this is correct okay now guys we know what is this d by dt d by dt r square theta dot okay now guys if you take the second term and m is multiplied what is the second term do beta by do theta now if you differentiate this there is no theta term so you'll get it is zero so what we see in actuality it is d by dt m r square theta dot minus 0 equal to 0 now if you integrate this what we find m r square theta dot is constant so that means what this angular momentum remain constant so r square theta dot will be also constant right because constant by mass is what constant so you can see which is with this we have used in kepler law angular momentum per unit mass is constant so this is from your theta coordinates but you write if the same thing for r coordinates so in that also what we have to do we have to write d by dt do beta by do r dash minus do beta by do r equal to 0 if we do this then first what first we have to find this term so what will be do beta by do r dash is this then again if you differentiate do beta by do r we get this term now substitute everything in this equation so from here what we got m r double dot plus mu 
एम यू आर स्क्वायर माइनस एम आर थीटा डॉट स्क्वायर इक्वल टू जीरो डिवाइड कंप्लीटली बाय एम एंड यस एम सो व्हाट इक्वेशंस वी गोट गाइस यस अभिषेक टेल मी अभिषेक okay no problem so we got this and further we are rearranging guys this equation okay how we have rearranged m we divided and then in this equation this r theta dot square is there na no? this r theta dot square so multiplied r square and divided so what we or you can say multiplied by r cube so it will become r power 4 upon r cube why this because we know what is the r square theta dot it is a angular momentum okay you can you can see h is what r square theta dot which is what angular momentum per unit mass so this is what your final equation of motion for orbital trajectory which is what R double dot minus h upon R cube plus mu upon R square equal to zero. Anyone has any doubt in this? Anyone has any doubt in this orbital trajectory equation? And guys, this equation will valid for all kind of orbit. Either it is a circular orbit. Or it is a elliptical orbit, parabolic orbit, hyperbolic orbit, all kind of orbit. Only the difference will be this e value. When the solution is done, based on this e value, we'll have different orbits. Anyone has any any concern on this? Now the solution of this it's a second order differential equation, and it is given by um, first by this, and then uh, finally. written in this form the you can say in the simplified form and this values of this a is constant here and c is constant will be from initial condition okay of trajectory now finally this a into h square by mu is given by eccentricity e and uh, your equation is what r equal to p upon 1 plus e cos theta because c will be also zero in most of the cases now what is the e it is eccentricity and based on this eccentricity there are different kind of orbits so if e equal to zero what it is it is circular path if e is less than elliptical path if e equal to one parabolic path and if e greater than 1 it is a hyperbolic path now based on this e values there are different kind of orbits and which again we need to study further in detail so we can solve most of the gate question but if if you take your gate question most of the gate question is from this circular orbit because many times they ask what is the velocity circular velocity okay at any radius or you need to uh um, move out of that circular orbit or to escape this uh, circular orbit and those things now what is next is what orbital energy okay which is also an important quantity so what is the orbital energy yes ashish so uh, in first kepler's law we define that the elliptical uh, any object will have elliptical orbit then yeah then how we can have circular and other orbits also mm -hmm. in that like in first uh, kepler's law we said mm -hmm. that the orbit will be elliptic no 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 that is the told by kepler okay so it doesn't hold uh, so it doesn't no no it is not always true because okay. when kepler gave you know galileo what galileo told is it true no no then not true right so same way kepler kepler also told long back okay 
but you okay. know this uh, uh, our uh, uh, you can say solar system right yes so actually kepler's law hold good for solar system right where earth uh, this uh, sun is the center of attraction for all other planets right yes. so the planets moves in elliptical path only am i correct or in some uh, other path yes sir yes. path no 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 elliptical yeah so that actually basically for uh, this uh, system solar system called we call right okay okay that nine planet what we call that system sun and the uh, different eh? what solar we call system. it solar system right in childhood we study yeah so yes. that's for basically that but uh, now you know uh, many uh, you can say uh, like uh, many times some objects which are launched will be uh, moving out of gravity right yes so when you want to move out of gravity you cannot follow elliptical path you have to come out of that parabolic path or hyperbolic path hyperbolic okay? yeah. yeah so in that case it all depends on the e value okay okay so this okay. is just mathematics actually uh, in space dynamics if you frankly say me what is the syllabus if you ask me now what is the syllabus it is hmm. just mathematics okay mathematics means what you need to know what is the elliptical orbit properly circular orbit uh, hyperbolic parabolic orbit in those orbit what is the eccentricity equations or what is the uh, this uh, radiuses or velocity the next part that's it okay so we are here orbital energy so is it clear now ashish yes sir thank you yeah so orbital energy so basically the summation of kinetic energy and potential energy is known as orbital energy so what is the orbital energy generally we denote by et okay it is what this t plus phi so when you add it what is going to happen phi is negative so there will be the difference now guys this et value the et value will be zero when et value will be zero for what for elliptical orbit this et value will be zero okay so this is all about uh, the, the, you know this is the orbital energy and usually we use orbital energy per unit mass which is given in this form which is what 1 by 2 v square minus mu by r and we know further what is the v square and all now guys we also know what is this r value r is what p upon 1 plus e cos theta now we can tell when um, r is minimum if this quantity is maximum so when it is maximum it is p upon 1 plus e so r will be minimum so that's all but uh, further further what it is done we can write eccentricity in terms of et from simplifying all these things okay these all <coughs> writing from here okay in this form and all so for me Oh, this is what important equation, which is what eccentricity is written in terms of orbital energy per unit mass. Now, this h we already know what is the mu? Mu is gm, and what is the h? It is r square theta dot. Okay. Now you can see if e is less than one, your et will be less than zero. Okay, so usually it is for what? Elliptical orbit. So in elliptical orbit, what we say? E eccentricity is less than one. And in this case, your potential energy, your potential energy will be greater than kinetic energy. Okay, so you can see this is greater than this. So in that case, your ET is less than zero. Now, as I told, ET is zero. When ET is zero, what we say? 
E equal to one. Okay, when it is zero, E equal to one. So E equal to one. That means it's a parabolic orbit. It's a parabolic orbit, not circular, guys. It's a parabolic orbit. When circular orbit, when E equal to zero, you will have a circular orbit. So in E equal to zero, that means what? In circular orbit also, your E t will be less than less than zero. Okay, E t will be less than zero. Now, guys. If e is greater than one, your e t will be greater than zero, and that case is what hyperbolic orbit. You can say your kinetic energy is more than potential energy. Okay, so uh, this is again important part, and there is a gate question from here. Okay, there is a gate question. Okay, so they told for uh, hyperbolic orbit, which is the true expression in recent gate paper only. Okay, so we start now with orbits. So first we start with circular orbit. So in case of circular orbit, what is the e value? Zero. So what will be the equation? It will be like p by hmm, one plus zero. So P is what? It is h square by mu. Okay, so you can say r is what h square by mu, and we also, uh, uh, if you write from that formula, guys, the what is the e formula? It is one plus one plus two h square e t upon Mu square. So guys, when e is zero, in e is zero, what is your et? It is minus h square upon two mu square. Now guys, we already know what is the et value. We already know what is the et value, which was v square by two minus mu by r. So guys, from here, from here, this equation in this equation we know. From here, if you write r equal to h square by mu. So what we see here, substitute. So it will be a minus r by sorry h square by mu right is r so what we say what we are going to find guys here h square am i correct was this correct okay here it is mr guys sorry 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 guys uh, let uh, okay E equal to one plus two um, h square e t upon mu square. Yes, correct. Okay. So from here, e is zero. So e is zero. So what is the e t? It is minus mu square upon two h square, and we know r is how much? R is h square upon mu. Now, guys, you can see this e t can be written as in if you substitute this here, what it will be mu by r mu by two r. Now, guys, we already know what is the e t. It is v square by two minus mu by r equal to Minus mu upon two r. So from here, what is your v will be coming if you take this equation that side. So we will get v equal to mu by r. This is what e important equation for you. Velocity in a circular orbit. It is given by what under root mu by 
R under root mu by R or it is again mu by H. So the velocity in a circular orbit it is under root mu by R or it is you can say mu is what under root gm by R. Now what is this R? What we need to know what is this R? Anyone? R is what R plus H. What I mean if you have a particle which is above h altitude above earth surface so r is what radius of earth so the uh, capital r is what radius of earth so this is r now so what is the important point here r must be measured from where center of earth from where this r should be measured center of earth and it is what r plus h so what is the velocity it is mu upon r plus h now guys sometime what happened suppose you uh, you have a object which is uh, in some altitude h1 okay uh, and you want to move uh, from this h1 to this new altitude h2 so how much velocity it will be required will it be v2 which is how much mu upon r plus h2 or something else it's already in this h1 altitude can anyone tell because this kind of question they ask in gate exam it's already in this circular orbit okay and you want to move to this new orbit what will be the velocity anyone akshar what will be the velocity jitesh hoshne likhit selvam satish you you already work uh, where your organization launches right frequent payloads no you are asking formula or uh, how velocity will be you are asking yeah will it be v2 or something else it's already in a circular altitude with altitude h1 we want to bring from h1 to new orbit or with new a new altitude h2 what will be the velocity requirement so you are asking for delta v ah that's what i want to know right so v2 will not be the correct so moving from h1 to h2 it will not be v2 exactly why delta v because when it is at some altitude h1 it's already having kinetic energy to sustain in this altitude h1 so that means it's already having some velocity v1 which is what under root mu by r plus h1 but you want to bring it to what new altitude which is h2 so that will be what delta v what will be the delta v which will be under root mu upon r plus h2 minus mu upon r plus h1 that means this is the new velocity requirement but it's already having some velocity so this delta v is required everyone getting my point it's not v2 what is the requirement delta v excess velocity that means v2 is nothing but v1 plus delta v Ashna, this point is clear because basically majority of the gate question is from this, or simply they are asking at particular altitude what is the velocity in circular orbit. Okay, so guys, clear circular velocity, and we know e value is zero. What is the et? Et for circular orbit is less than. Zero and E is zero. 
now escape velocity so what is the escape velocity can anyone tell so for escape velocity Velo means what huh? velocity required for a body to escape the earth's gravitation uh, gravitation i think in our 11th we study this right the velocity required to escape earth gravitation is known as escape velocity when particle will escape earth gravitation if your orbital energy become zero which is again the case of parabolic orbit so when et will become zero what is the et it is v square by 2 minus mu by r and this became zero so from here what is the mu uh, v value v escape it is under root 2 mu by r now if any particle is escaping from earth surface so what is this under root 2 mu by r and we know what is this standard value most of you will be knowing 11.2 km per second am i correct to escape earth uh, gravitation from earth surface how much it is 11.2 km per second now guys again there are gate question which which says what you have a, uh, you have an object which is at some altitude h and from that altitude we want to escape earth gravitation what will be the velocity requirement anyone will it be like root 2 minus 1 huh again root yes minus 1 yes Bracket, yes uh, yeah yeah we will discuss so just i want to tell everyone because this kind of mistake happens so we escape will not be this formula under root 2 mu by r plus h it will not because when it is in this uh, altitude it's already having some velocity which is velocity how much mu upon r plus h so to escape from this altitude what is the velocity requirement delta v which will be how much under root 2 mu r plus h minus under root mu upon r plus h clear is this correct na so this yes, everyone is it, everyone is it correct understanding my point what i mean see when it is at some altitude it is already having the velocity so the velocity requirement to escape earth gravitation from this altitude is not this formula it will be delta v everyone yes or no कार्तिके अनीश आगम कविता कृष्ण पितुंग रेंगराशु प्लीज रेस्पॉन्ड गाइस ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट फॉर द सो नेक्स्ट इज व्हाट पैराबोलिक ऑर्बिट सो एज ऑलरेडी वी डिस्कस्ड in case of parabolic orbit et is 0 and e equal to 1 so we know what is the e trajectory equation it is h square by mu and when e equal to 1 so it will become 1 plus 1 2 so what is the r value it will be h square upon 2 mu now guys when e equal to 1 e equal to 1 and we know it is given by how much 1 plus Uh, 2 h square et upon mu square 
and we know from here et is zero okay so when et is zero we know this formula v square by 2 minus mu by r equal to zero so from here parabolic velocity parabolic velocity will be given by what v equal to under root 2 mu by r and we know <coughs> this perigee distance rp what i have found here now this is known as perigee distance means when theta is zero this is the perigee distance which is given by h square upon 2 mu what is the velocity velocity will be maximum at perigee so you can see under root 2 mu upon rp is what perigee velocity and it is again given by 2 mu by h now guys this is what your escape velocity also so whenever there is a parabolic orbit uh, orbital trajectory that means your object will escape from earth gravitation now again i have told this formula if you are writing it is applicable from earth surface if your object is at already in some uh, lower orbit then you need to use excess velocity delta v okay to escape now the uh, next important and most important is what elliptical orbit okay so for elliptical orbit we already know what is the et is less than zero what is the e eccentricity is also less than one and we know for orbital trajectory uh, elliptical orbit from our mathematics this is what major axis 2b and this is minor axis uh, sorry 2a is major axis and 2b is minor axis so a is semi major axis semi major axis and b is semi minor axis now from mathematical relation we know this is what your center of attraction okay so the nearest to center of center of center of attraction point is known as perigee and furthest off point is known as apogee now this uh, center of attraction to perigee distance is known as rp and this distance which is known as ra so perigee distance is always given by what semi major axis into 1 minus e and apogee distance is given by what a into 1 plus e okay now guys uh, the the distance of this uh, center of attraction to center of this ellipse is given by a e and the same distance here a e now if you take this triangle right angle triangle so this is what b and this is what a what is the a here it is hypotenuse and this distance is a e so if you use this triangle we can find e value so what is the e value will be coming for this parabola it will be under root a square minus b square by a you guys can see am i correct is this formula correct the value of e is for hyper uh, sorry for ellipse it is how much under root a square minus b square by a yes is it correct or not or 1 minus b square by a square okay so this now this e value if you write uh, this um, from these two expression my e value also can be written as ra minus rp upon ra plus rp in terms of opposite and perigee distance and there is a gate question from this formula okay ra minus rp upon ra plus rp okay and uh, if you see uh, this <laughs> ra plus rp what is the ra plus rp it is 2a what is the maximum distance we already know opposite minimum distance is perigee distance so here you can see this formula 
already I have written and we know E also I have written. And for elliptical orbit, what is the R? It is H square by mu upon one plus E cos theta. Now R minimum, if you write, it will be how much? H square upon one minus E, one minus E, okay? Uh, sorry, one plus E is minimum. What is the maximum when theta is 180 degree? So R max, which is opposite is what? H square upon one minus E. Now guys, again, again, we can find the ratio RP and RA in terms of H square and E. Okay, all those things we can do. So you can see H square by mu, which is RP upon, and you can write in this form. Okay, so A into one minus E square and E value we already know. So finally, H square by mu is coming as B square A, all this simplification, E already we know and all. What is important for me, for hyper uh, elliptical, my ET value is given by how much? Minus mu upon 2A, okay? You can rearrange and write. This is what important for me. My orbital energy per unit mass is given by minus mu by 2A. Now, when you go for, um, this is elliptical, hyperbolic orbit, this ET will be coming at uh, how much? Mu upon 2A. So that is the difference between this and a further hyperbolic orbit. Now, guys, we, once you know ET, which is how much? Mu upon 2A. We already know, guys, what, what is our uh, ET, which is V square upon 2 minus um, mu upon R, okay? So guys, at any radius, we can write velocity in elliptical orbit. So which will be given how, by how much, uh, how it will be given, guys? It will be like V square by 2 equal to mu upon 2A plus mu by R. So we can take 2 to cancel. So mu I can take out. So it will be how much? Mm. Mu, so if you take LCM, mu, uh, okay, LCM if I take, so it is R plus 2A upon AR. And if you take U, so I think this would be the correct, yes, you can say this. Okay, so I think minus sign, why it is minus sign? It is minus exactly, okay, sorry. This is minus, so you can say minus. So I think uh, this plus minus. So the equation, uh, if we simplify uh, V, so what is the V will be coming? Velocity at any radius in elliptical orbit under root mu by A, 2A by R minus one. Now at velocity at perigee, if you substitute R to RP, we can find so it is coming as this formula, which is what VP equal to under root. You guys have to remember this formula, guys. Please uh, practice so you guys can remember. Okay. And this again can be written in this form, which is how much? 2 mu RA upon RP into RA plus RP. RA plus RP is nothing but RA plus RP is nothing but 2A, okay? So guys, please check out if this is correct. RA plus RP. RA plus RP, I think it is 2A. So guys, check it. It's correct or not. Now guys, VP we know. Same way, we can find VA, velocity as apogee. So what is the difference you can see? This is this will be higher, this will be lower, and VA is coming how much? Mu by A, 
uh, it will be one minus e upon one plus e. Okay, it's just you can see the this will be higher because it is one plus e upon one minus e and this. Now, guys, you guys remember please this formula. This formula. Now again, there is a question. What will be the x uh, escape velocity required if an object is in elliptical orbit? What will be the escape velocity required? Anyone? Will it be under root two mu by r? Will it be this? Will it be this, guys? Ashne, will it be this? If your object is in this elliptical orbit and it is at some radius, what will be the escape velocity required? Will uh, will it be this? No. What it will be? It will be delta v, and it will be under root two mu by r minus at that radius. What is the velocity? It is mu by a. 2a by r minus 1. Okay, you can see. So, guys, every time this escape velocity is very important. Okay, from your gate perspective or from your learning, because I will tell you all have seen that movie, na Mission Mangal. What is that? Mission Mangal. That is how much that movie is true. So much of masala is there, right? Uh, yes, so sir. what? <laughs> yeah. So what mm -hmm. actually happens? Uh, Hoffman uh, transfer they have used. Okay. Uh, are they using Hoffman transfer, uh, Satish? In this? Ah, uh, yes, sir. It's yeah. Hoffman transfer. Yeah, Hoffman transfer. Okay, but it was there in actually in gate syllabus earlier days, but now it is not there. Okay, so what Hoffman transfer do? First, from Earth, uh, you know your object or satellite, they will transfer to LEO, low Earth orbit. Okay, then from this low Earth orbit, it is what a circular orbit. It will move to a elliptical orbit. Which is known as transferred orbit. Okay, so what happened? The, this is what first it is Earth, right? Earth radius, and it is some altitude. So what is the radius of this? The LEO, it is R plus H. So what they do? They transfer from this circular orbit to this elliptical orbit, which is known as transfer uh, orbit, and this will be. In this case, this will be what appositions. Now they use this apogee uh, distance as a radius of that orbit, and then they transfer it to bigger geosynchronous orbit, right? So LEO to geosynchronous orbit (GSO). That's how you know uh, the satellite transfer happens. Now, guys, what happens to bring from this circular orbit to this elliptical orbit? What has to be done? Can anyone tell? Firing has to be done. Firing at which point? This point. Okay. Yes. To increase the velocity. So that means if we increase velocity, which is how much? Under root mu upon r plus h. What is going to happen? Anyone? And that is firing will be very selective at this perigee. So what is going to happen? If velocity is increased from this, it will become. It will not be in circular path. It will be. It will be a what elliptical path. Now, <clears throat> to bring from this elliptical path further, either to uh, move out of this or uh, to make a bigger circular orbit. What they do at apogee, they again launch. Okay, More firing clear. done. They will increase velocity in such a way that this RA, 
apogee distance will become a radius of new circular orbit okay so if you see what all velocity requirement it will have the initial launch we need uh, v then from v what we need uh, this uh, under root mu by a uh, 2a by r minus 1 minus this velocity at this position and then further you will have velocity which is at uh, you know apogee velocity then you have to make from that apogee the bigger uh, this will be the bigger radius so which will be what then finally my velocity requirement here it will be delta v here also delta v okay and uh, <clears throat> this delta v will be what this v gso minus v apogee okay and this delta v will be what v perigee minus v leo okay so that's how we have to understand this okay so <clears throat> try to understand this uh, uh, change in velocity concept based on where is your object already time period so time period for elliptical orbit it is given by what this formula which is uh, 2 mu a by v okay and for circular orbit it is given by this now guys v is what the volume covered or you can say for circular orbit you guys can remember this is what time period formula and for elliptical orbit this is what the formula so if you say in both the cases t square is proportional to what r cube and in second case t square proportional to a cube okay so you guys can remember this formula and how it is derived also it is mentioned here now the last part which is what hyperbolic orbit so in case of hyperbolic orbit what is your formula e is greater than 1 and et is also greater than 0 and i told already if you derive et will be coming as what mu upon 2a mu upon 2a now again this is from mathematics the trajectory of hyperbola is given by this all these point what is this perigee point this is the center of attraction this is what 2a is what major axis 2b is minor axis this is the directrix all it is mathematics what is important for me it is et as i told it will be kinetic energy uh, this uh, orbital energy per unit mass is what mu by 2a and again we we know <coughs> this uh, guys um, what is the e value for hyperbola it is under root a square plus b square upon a okay and what will be the r value it will be h square upon mu and 1 plus e cos theta at uh, theta equal to 0 it is 1 plus e so and uh, we can find r minimum so r minimum is what h square upon mu 1 plus e or it is also known as what a into e minus 1 because e is greater than 1 so all these and finally you guys can get this so this uh, remaining all is mathematical part but for me important is this what mu upon 2a is what orbital unit um, energy per unit mass and it is equal to what v square by 2 minus mu by again r so from here we can see what is the velocity at any radius r in hyperbolic orbit it is mu upon a 2a by r plus 1 you can see in earlier case in elliptical orbit what it was it was mu upon a 2a by r minus 1 so this is the difference now we can find what is the velocity as perigee this is same earlier also we had similar expression now also similar expression that's now one more uh, important formula for elliptical orbit 
which uh, from your gate exam perspective is what eccentricity can also be written in terms of velocity so if you write in terms of velocity your e will be v perigee minus <coughs> v apogee upon v perigee plus v apogee and this you guys can prove also okay by substituting the um, v perigee and v apogee uh, or you can say v perigee upon v apogee minus 1 upon v perigee upon v apogee plus 1 because one of the gate question is there where they given the this ratio the velocity at perigee to velocity as apogee ratio is given eccentricity has to be found so we can use this formula we can find okay and this table which is given further uh, based on whatever we have discussed so a different uh, orbit ellipse parabola hyperbola what is this orbital energy per unit mass minus mu by 2a parabolic zero mu by 2a what is the velocity at any radius this formula we know what is the h in terms of this what is the rp which is apogee distance what is the e value all so this table you guys can remember okay so we'll start with question quickly we we will solve as many question and then we'll wind up today's session so it's clear so is it tough like space dynamics whatever there in syllabus part is it tough it is more of mathematics you need to remember certain formula and you can understand how those formulas are derived anyone has any concern anyone any concern guys okay hopefully if it is there you guys can tell me hopefully no concern any concern now that is not part of syllabus pitunga that hoffman orbit transfer is not part of our gate syllabus <coughs> hey guys sir, you, yeah yes sir, sir do we have any name for that mu uh, g into m no 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 it's a constant there is no particular name okay okay because uh, see both are constant na g and m both are constant so they write it as a single value okay okay so let's see this first question what it says for hyperbolic trajectory of a satellite of mass m having velocity v at radius r from the center of earth g is gravitational constant m is the mass of earth which one of the following relation is true so we know for hyperbolic trajectory et is greater than 0 so that means what your kinetic energy is greater than your potential energy right so that means 1 by 2 mv square is greater than under root gmm by r Yes, Rangela. So you want to say something? Kartike, Jitesh, quickly respond, guys. Agam, Akriti, Anish. gravitational parameter is it yeah okay next question read the question number 43 the ratio of tangential velocity of a planet at the perihelion and the aphelion from the sun is this so i told na 
VP upon VA they given. It is how much? 1.0339. They told assuming the planets orbit around the sun is planar and elliptic. They asked the eccentricity of the orbit. Uh, I think RTK you may need to refresh, but no problem. So what is the E value? E value will be VP upon VA minus 1 upon VP upon VA plus 1, right? So guys, find out E value. How I have found, guys, we know what is the VP. It was under root. Yes, what is it? 0. Yeah. Others also, please find the E value. Tell me. Manuj, are you there in class? So, Manoj, the entire syllabus is done or not? You are worried, right? Kind of it is done by Sunday. Hmm? So, our promise is true or not? December end means December end. Of course, lot many classes we took. But we try to teach as much as in depth, right or wrong. Especially mathematics, what we say, it went on and on, right? Mr. Manoj, so many arts we have taught, I'm not sure. How much you guys are utilizing that? Those many hours, yes, 0 0.017. Okay. Yeah. I I would have not been like allowed those many hours. Usually I don't like, but okay. You guys uh, wanted to learn more. Kartike. Because Sir's way of teaching is very different from others, all mathematics teacher. But fine. Okay, so next question, guys, read what it says. 2019 question, read the question. The product of Earth mass and universal uh, gravitational constant G, GM means mu is given. The radius of Earth is given. The minimum increment in the velocity to be imparted to a space craft already flying in a circular orbit, right? At an Earth, uh, at an altitude of 4,000 kilometer. To make it exit from Earth gravitational field, right? So what we need? Delta V. So what it will be? 2 mu upon R plus H minus mu upon r plus h am i correct everyone agree with this because i already explained multiple multiple times this is already in orbit with some radius h right and from uh, not radius h r plus h or at an altitude from here we want to escape so we want to increase the velocity so that velocity is delta V and it is given by this. So tell me the answer, guys. What is the answer? Sir, it should be in uh, kilometer per second or meter per second, sir. No, they ask kilometer per second. Okay. 2.57. Yeah. So answer is coming 
2.5 kilometer per second. I will tell you there is actually in gate twice they did mistake also. They didn't give unit. Okay. In 2022 paper also they did. What did they did now? Satish, they didn't give unit. Right answer in kilometer per second or meter per second. So what you will do in that case? Not much once they did it twice in last two three years, especially space dynamics question. Whatever uh, the units they have given based on that will answer, sir. That's all. Any unit you can answer kilometer per second. Usually, guys, in space dynamics, uh, velocity we measure in kilometer per second. Yeah, we can write in meter per second as well. Both the answers they uh, means uh, they mention correct, okay. But usually we can always write if unit is not given in SI unit. Everyone, please tell me what is this delta V? What is the delta V, Akriti? Yeah, so it is 2.57 or 56 kilometer per second. Okay, so next question, guys, read uh, what they say. The tangential velocity component V of a spacecraft, which is in circular orbit of radius R around the spherical Earth. So we know what is the circular velocity, guys? Question number 19. It's B, under root mu by R, right? And they told already, this is capital R. Okay. Now read next. The equation of the trajectory of a typical space object around any planet in a polar coordinates r comma theta. Okay. A general conic section geometry is given as follows. H is angular momentum. Mu is gravitational parameter. E is eccentricity. R is radial distance. And theta is the angle between vectors E and R. So guys, what is the trajectory equation we all know, right? R is h square by mu upon 1 plus e cos theta minus c, right? Here c is 0. So what is the answer? c is the answer, right? So it was a straightforward question. Everyone, please answer poll. Is the answer is the answer next in an in an elliptical orbit around any planet location at which a spacecraft has maximum angular velocity. So where maximum angular velocity at periapsis, right? Why? Why angular velocity at periapsis? Because we know angular velocity is angular momentum is constant v by r, right? So we know v is maximum, r is minimum, right? At periapsis. So your angular velocity will be max. Minimum radius, maximum velocity, right? So angular velocity is maximum at periapsis in elliptical orbit.
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन गाइस रीड अ स्पेस क्राफ्ट फॉर्म्स अ सर्कुलर ऑर्बिट एंड एल्टीट्यूड ऑफ 150 किलोमीटर आई वाज टॉकिंग दिस क्वेश्चन ओनली यू कैन रीड दिस क्वेश्चन अबव सरफेस ऑफ द स्पेरिकल अर्थ एज्यूमिंग द ग्रेविटेशनल पैरामीटर म्यू रेडियस ऑफ अर्थ दिस the velocity required for injection of the space craft parallel to local horizon is so guys in this altitude circular altitude and we need velocity required to inject in this right parallel to local horizon means what guys it is nothing like this is like local horizon so here they want velocity in the sam this okay <laughs> so what it should be v circular is what under root mu by r plus h now what what is the missing thing here can anyone tell what is the missing part here if you read the question they ask this velocity right velocity required for the injection of space craft parallel to the local horizon is what about unit what about unit guys here it's missing right so either you can write your answer in meter per second or you can also write in kilometer per second they given range for both range for both options okay so tell me the answer guys yeah so it is 3.198 km per second or 3198 m per second next question if you read what it says the period of revolution of earth about sun is this many days and semi major axis is given the semi major axis of mars is also given so they ask the period of revolution of the mars so we already know t square is proportional to a q now t mass by t earth will be what a mars by a earth p by 2 so you we can find t mars guys find out t mars question what it says uh, this is another good question and this kind of question is also asked so read the question what it says a satellite is injected at an altitude of 350 km above the earth surface with a velocity of 8 km per second parallel to the local horizon earth radius is given gravitational parameter is given so the satellite will have what kind of path so see the velocity they already told ki with this velocity it is injected now guys at any radius what will be the circular velocity it is under root mu by r what will be the parabolic velocity at any radius under root 2 mu by r what will be the hyperbolic velocity at any radius what will be the hyperbolic velocity we we need for that a value but we can say if the given velocity is greater than v parabolic if the given velocity is greater than v parabolic what will be the what will be the what will be this uh, uh, path it will be hyperbolic 
if this given velocity is greater than v circular and v is less than v parabolic what will be the path can anyone tell the given velocity lies between lies between parabolic and circular what will be the path it will be elliptical path okay so guys these things you have to always check if such question comes so first what i am going to check what is the circular velocity for this what is the parabolic if velocity is lying between these two that means it forms an elliptical path guys please check out for this given radius so what will be the r it will be 6378 plus 350 so for this r find out guys v circular what is v circular rangara so how much yes and what about this v parabolic you can multiply by under root 2 so under root 2 into 7.69 how much coming around 10 point something yes so 10.88 km per second so that means what velocity is between parabolic and circular so it is a elliptical path okay so b is the answer b is the answer b is the answer b is the answer Pushpendra, Kartik, Anish. We can find out uh, using energy concept also. So. Yeah. Yes, we can find E T. Okay. Square by two minus mu yeah, by r. Yeah, V square by two minus mu by r. So if if see again here problem will be what if E T is less than zero. so you you will not able to identify identify between elliptical and circular right satish because for elliptical and circular both it is less than 0 so then of course you have to find v circular and uh, uh, v circular okay yeah clear no yes yeah. so guys next question so this question anyway guys 2015 it's not in your syllabus so they asked out of plan uh, manwar they wanted okay so this is not in your syllabus um but anyway uh, if you try i will tell see what happening now the initially the orbit is in circular path and same radius impulse out of magnitude change is required so geo stationary orbit to a circular of the to, to single out of plane maneuver so actually in this case what was the question see it is in some path okay and here from here they want the change of plane so by 90 degree they wanted a plane change okay so for that what is the additional velocity requirement so for that hoffman orbit transfer has one formula if you use that formula sinusoidal formula yeah so so this saying something it is delta v yeah delta v equal to 2v sin delta i by 2 okay 
this formula. So change in velocity will be what initial velocity twice into sine delta by two. Now delta is how much? 90 degree here because out of plane manoeuvre we have to do. Okay. So in this case, if you find it will come under root two times v, and we already know. What is the escape velocity? It is always under root two times V circular, right? So this is circular. So it is what? One time. The answer is what? One times of magnitude of circular velocity. But anyway, it is not in gate syllabus. So uh, I will not go in that depth as we didn't discuss that concept. Yeah. Now this question. Again, it is same as with previous. What they given? Planetary probe, probe is launched at speed 200 km per second and a, a, at a distance of 71,400 km from mass center of the nearest planet. Mass is given. Universal gravitational constant is given. They are asking what is the path of the probe. So again, guys, we have to check velocity. So at radius, uh, this, what will be velocity? If you check, so what it will be for circular, it is mu upon r and they are they given and then uh, uh, mass is given. So mu is nothing but what under root gm by r. Okay, g is known, mass is known. Okay, we can. So circular find out. Then find out parabolic. You will come to know what is the path. Yes, or this. Hyperbolic, sir. Yes, because uh, what will be V parabolic? 166 something will come, right? What is the V parabolic? It is under root 2 times of VC. So how much it is coming? Hmm. Guys, tell me the answer. What is the parabolic velocity or circular velocity, guys? For this case. Yes, circular. So under root 2, if you multiply, it comes around 160, if I remember. 180 or 160 something was there. 188 something. Yeah, 187. So 187.8 kilometers per second. So this is what the parabolic, uh, parabolic velocity requirement at that radius. Since the velocity is more than that means the ellipse is, um, the, the orbit is hyperbolic. The orbit is hyperbolic. Because they already told the velocity or speed at which launched is 200 kilometer per second. So the orbit is hyperbolic orbit. Okay, so let's move to next question. So what they given? Consider R as the radius of the moon and ratio of the velocities of the two spacecraft orbiting moon in a circular orbit at an altitude R and 2R above the surface of the moon is. So guys, first, Ratio of the velocity when radius is r, how much 
v1 is under root mu upon r plus r then v2 is what mu upon r plus 2r so they ask what is the ratio v1 by v2 how much it is guys it will be under root 3 by 2 right so it is 1.22 now the next question again is not in gate syllabus but still i will tell the answer the hauman ellipse used as earth mars orbit transfer has so your perigee will be at earth and apogee will be mars okay see from earth is circular right so from circular we are going elliptical so this is what this is what your apogee okay from here then they will make it as what mars so that means what this is opposite it will be at what mars so what is the answer what is the answer guys the answer in earth mars uh, transfer orbit apogee at mars and perigee at earth c is the answer c is the answer yes so guys remaining you guys can do or should i do remaining question remaining question should i do okay let's uh, finish this page i'll do till question number 42 this what it is given an elliptical orbit has perigee 400 km above earth surface and apogee 3400 km above earth surface they ask eccentricity they ask semi major axis so what is the e it is r a minus r p upon r a plus r p now what is the r a mostly people do mistake they forget to add earth radius because they given as above earth surface so my r a is 3400 plus 6400 okay what is the r p it is 400 plus 6400 400 so find out e value guys what is the e value once you know e value my semi major axis a so we know guys already your rp is nothing but a into 1 minus e so a is rp upon 1 minus e b option as sir i think others please to check so satish i am giving you one homework okay this question i don't know if you know how to solve let me know this question number 26 hmm which is like based on mechanics only it is not uh, something like you have to use this newton's equation and all okay, okay? yeah hmm. so i think it is like uh, they given momentum and all okay because this kg per second na it's unit of momentum okay 
uh, not momentum it is actually mass uh, transfer per second and all so just yeah, check yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah. So what is the answer, Rangarasu? Or uh, for 42 question number 42, guys, what is the answer? A is the answer. Uh, Satish, can you check your answer? 0.18. Once you get 0.18, you can check using this equation. Sir, actually, I have not worked out uh, that whatever uh, in your practice, uh, some problems you gave, no? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There actually saw this question. Uh, so I vaguely remember that. Uh, okay, so okay. Know. Okay, no problem. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. So A is the answer. So RP we know and point one eight yeah we can find okay so RP is um, six thousand eight hundred upon one minus point one eight yeah I think eight thousand three hundred will come because we can see the value should be more than this six thousand eight hundred so it is eight thousand three hundred A is the correct answer guys A is the correct answer now next already we know. Question number 15, what it is? The angular momentum about the center of mass of the Earth of an artificial satellite in a highly elliptical orbit. So what remain constant? Angular momentum remain constant, right? We all know, right? In elliptical orbit, Kepler's second law. Angular momentum remain constant. So is a constant. What is the answer? Is B B is the answer. Your angular momentum remain constant. Okay, so that's all from today's class. And Satish, try this question number 26. Anyone else also and share me if you get. A remaining uh, two three years question you guys can do as a homework so this is also done sunday i will complete vibration also guys because in vibration um, uh, our uh, raul sir will not take up that uh, multi-degree and continuous because that that is only in gate error space syllabus so i will take up that will finish and then from my side one is small things which i would like to support uh, with uh, that airy stress function and compatibility which I have already shared you you guys can refer that my YouTube lecture or I will take up on Wednesday or sometime okay so thank you all guys and uh, full mock exams is uh, going to start from Jan 7th so guys Jan 7th uh, is first full mock exams plan accordingly Oh, and uh, all other exams are already open subject wise module wise try to complete uh, revise properly and plan accordingly anyway the syllabus is kind of done for july batch and uh, yes key will be there immediately you'll get result anyway you should refer two attempts will be giving itongo he will be your result will be immediately published manoj okay it's same like but solution we don't provide okay we follow strictly in igc this solution we don't give okay all right so how are our exams topic wise exams and all is going good right you have to burn your brain. A lot of churning has to be done, right, Ashne? It's not that it's straightforward, PYQs. Yeah, Ash, you can attempt anytime, but better attempt on uh, uh, that same time when your gate exam. 
your mental watch need to be aligned with that gate is scheduled day clear it is good uh, you guys write in afternoon you guys will not feel lazy on the gate day if you write on random time now your mental watch will not be aligned with your ex uh, real gate exam schedule that's why i we are keeping saturday sundays two exams weekdays only one exam okay weekdays exam okay if you are not having but writing mock exam on that yes satish you want to say something no sir no sir yeah all right okay so thank you all guys good night bye